Now, um, looking at the empirical research and evidence on this, we find that actually <laughs> Werner von Siemens, the, um, uh, the technological entrepreneur, had gone to the top of the pyramid in the 18th century and actually went up with a wine glass and um, some newspaper and created a Leyden jar. He went at the top and actually found that uh, there was electrostatic buildup at the top. He almost like threw his Arab guide down, down, down the, the pyramid and he was yelling like, you know, devil, devil or whatever else. Alexander Golod is one of the few who actually has built uh, 40 pyramids across Russia in the post-Soviet Union. Uh, this is in Bashkiria. He put this over oil fields. And he found that when he was building his first pyramid, the KGB was actually attracted to it because uh, for some reason, there was some sort of standing column or wave that had actually interrupted their military radar system. So they had gone there midway through construction to investigate this. Now, um, Joe Parr, the inventor of the gamma ray transducer, as I mentioned before, was the first one, 25 years, you know, studying pyramids, was the first one who actually went up to the top of the pyramid with an ES field meter to try and actually gauge, uh, you know, an understanding of how much, you know, energy we're talking about here. And he actually put together an 11-year solar cycle map that actually would, you know, determine when the pyramid has its most uh, effective or is most effective. Uh, this is um, uh, Dan Davidson. Welcome to uh, the uh, lunatic fringe of science. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is fringe science. Um, and uh, uh, he, he actually did more research into shape power, how actually electromagnetic fields on field lines, like a prism, would disperse and diffract light. How does a pyramid actually curve lines, curve the magnetic field lines of the Earth, you know, to provide, uh, you know, energy at its center? And, you know, coming up, uh, actually, um, Les Brown, a Canadian uh, researcher, uh, crystal researcher actually, coincidentally, um, had done research, actually built one in his backyard and did something analog, like he put together you know, an antenna at the top, put together an antenna at the bottom, and story has it is that when he went and attached a piece of wool to the bottom, <coughs> um, what he found is that he actually was recoiled backwards. There was so much electrostatic buildup or something at the center of the pyramid that in some way or form he was you know, shocked. And so again, this is all myth, but we're going to try and confirm or bust this. This is Flavio Thomas. He industrialized his idea. He was able to actually pull, you know, energy out of the center of a pyramid and power a 12-volt fan. Um, and there are just a lot of people out there who just claim that they figured it out. They know how to harness energy from a pyramid. So next semester, and to, just to conclude, I'll be doing the pyramid battery experimental setup varying parameters in terms of materials, shape and size, the orientation of the pyramid, but also in terms of the velocity, you know, maybe we might have to spin this thing, the conditions that are, you know, uh, you know, in the environment as well. Input methods, we'll use sound and EM waves to enhance the energy as well. And in terms of data collection, uh, we'll be doing some, or I'll be doing some 3D simulations using an ES field meter and a Gauss meter, as well as uh, an antenna hookup. Uh, and so, essentially, what we need to do is investigate, because it's like Einstein said, you know, to condemn without investigation is the height of all ignorance. So what we're trying to do here, or I'm trying to do here, is not be ignorant. Uh, it's trying to, you know, test the myth, see whether or not this works. So I went into the myth of pyramid power, and, uh, you know, its electromagnetic abilities, or myths, and uh, we'll have to judge it for ourselves next semester. Thank you very much.